What's up Nerf Herders, this is Alan from OC Nerf and we've got an exciting unboxing today. This package comes all the way from Singapore from uh, Gavin himself. There is a couple of things in here, one for me, one for Mr. Chris Cartea. And inside we're going to find out exactly what Gavin sent us. So let's open it up. And here it is. One and two. This one, I'm not gonna be opening up. This blue one is for Chris, so I'm gonna keep that in the box for him. And we're gonna take out this red one. So what we're looking at here is the brand new SPAMF kit from Gavin Fuzzy Customs. SPAMF stands for Slide Prime Action Mag Fed Falcon Fire. It's uh, a new kit that you can just pretty much drop in and replace your parts from your Falcon Fire to convert it from a single dart loading breech pistol to a mag fed pistol, which realistically should have been what it was from the very beginning. So let's kind of take a look at these parts. The first part we're going to take a look at here is the barrel. And oh my goodness, these parts are phenomenal, as in the quality of these parts is phenomenal, just uh, the print quality. Um, feels very solid and sturdy. There's a PETG barrel already installed inside. As you can sort of see, of course you can't completely see it as PETG means that it's fairly clear, but there is a plastic barrel, a clear plastic barrel inside of there. This of course is the magazine uh, well where you can put in either katanas or talon magazines because Gavin thought of everything. And also they have a uh, flared opening right here so you can have some nice easy tactical reloading. There are already the bolts and screws that are in place necessary to go here. And then let's move to the rear piece of this upper and we have the catches, spring loaded catches for both the Katana and the Talon magazines of which I have both so we'll be testing them out today. He's also got all the hardware already locked into place to keep this um, ready and set for you, including the hardware back here. There's also a lot of instructions that Gavin has put together on his uh, website to show you exactly how to install this, both uh, how to install this um, <clears throat> on his uh, Etsy page as well as his Facebook page. So you can take a look there. I'm gonna be taking a look at it as I go ahead and put this in. But again, very nice, not just nice printing, and functional, but really the design work is phenomenal. I'm gonna take a look at this one more time across the camera here, but just take a look at the detail of these parts. These are not just functional parts, they're gorgeous parts. And let's take a look at the insides. This is the brand new bolt that it's gonna come with. Ah, okay, so one of my concerns about this bolt, having worked on many sharp fires, as you know, is this nub piece right here, which works out fine in a sharp fire, even at high spring loads, but I was concerned what might happen to it if it's 3D printed. So he made it really wide, but also added this spine to the bolt, which really helps to support it. If you've noticed the design change that I recommended and was updated on from Orange Modworks's um, 3D printed uh, long shot kit. They also added a longer full spine here to help support that. If you look at the Vectorworks, the Stuka kit, they also have the same thing. This is to support the 3D printed um, connector bolt here, which is a very smart thing to do. It's O-ring sealed. The inner diameter is, uh, uh, we'll have to measure that out, but it's pretty small, but it does taper, so that's a good thing. Um, there's not much air volume inside of a, of a Falcon Fire or a Sharp Fire, so this is probably just right enough for that fit. And of course, this will go right into our uh, barrel piece here with a tight seal, that O-ring seal plus the, uh, the plastic around. Ooh, there you go, the plastic that's already around the uh, PETG there to seal it. will give us a nice seal. There's a groove back here for the o-ring which will probably be using the o-ring from the actual falcon fire so that's good and a bag of other parts that will go in to the blaster itself as well we've got i believe that's the magazine release 
Um, not sure what that one is, but I'll look it up when I install it. This looks like a new trigger and a new yoke for this spring. This has probably got something to do with the spacers in the back. It looks like it's got a new yoke for the spring and it's got another O-ring inside of here. So that's all that comes with this kit. Everything is as ready to install as possible. So we're gonna go ahead and bring out our Falcon Fire and take a look at what we're gonna be changing out. So this of course is our Falcon Fire. It is from the AccuStrike series. It is a replica of the Sharp Fire with some differences internally. Um, I can go into more detail about that later uh, as I've got another Sharp Fire to do a different kind of build on. But one of the things that we thought about in the community when we first saw this blaster is, is this going to be somewhat magazine fed because it seems to have something here for that. But it turns out that this area was uh, only for dart storage. And this was indeed just a single shot pistol. So that's all it was, but it is in a very um, gorgeous looking design and a very comfortable handle in my opinion. Um, it's missing a barrel up here so that for normal use, it's not going to have any barrel drag, but for our purposes, um, it would have needed something to stabilize the barrel that we would have put in here anyway. So Gavin has taken care of all of that. Now let's take a look at what parts we're going to be replacing. If you take a look here and here, you'll notice that this pretty much matches up perfectly. So we're going to be removing this whole orange piece up front and we're going to be replacing it with this. So we're going to go ahead and start opening this thing up and uh, start putting all the pieces in here. I'm going to be referencing Gavin's guide online so I can make sure to do this correctly. I encourage you guys to do the same if you have yours um, and I'm going to get right onto it. I just want to take some time to reposition that camera, but also show you kind of how Gavin did this inside. The screw bosses are just beautiful pieces of hardware, and this is a self-contained um, system for your magazine release. I think that's just absolutely fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead and get this put back together, but they pretty much are going to be fitting right into the screw ports. Um, on the lower here of the Falcon Fire, and it is a nice and beautiful fit. Um, just kudos to Gavin for thinking about all the little tiny things about this kit. I'm probably gonna keep gushing about it, but I'm gonna get back to work and put this thing back together. Okay, I'm gonna stop this video again. Um, the way he's designed these lock pieces together from one half to the other of this new uh, shell piece is just awesome. He's got a <clears throat> pretty much like a T inlet here that locks into place um, in perhaps two different directions, but that's awesome. There's three pieces there that are going to hold it and make sure that this stays tightly in place. So 
So this is how the uh, magazine release system works. So instead of having a magazine system here and being having it be, jeez, oh, sorry guys, sorry about the camera again. All right, so I'm getting used to with a camera placement here and I keep bumping it. But let's talk about, to talk about this magazine release for a second here. So instead of what I expected the magazine release to be coming out of here, which would have been making it a very long reach, he's made it a much shorter reach and had the magazine release here. So it's got this nice L piece here and it's a very solid leaf printed piece. So I don't think it's gonna break anytime soon. I'm not sure what infill he used on here, but it's pretty darn solid. So I think that's all of it for the inside of the blaster. We're gonna go ahead and close her up and uh, finish putting it back together on the slide. And there it is, all put together. Took me a total of about 15, 20 minutes to put all in there. Ooh, my hands are very greasy. Um, but yeah, I can definitely prime that spring. I have a worker and a katana right here. So we're gonna try it with a katana first. Katana holds in just fine, no issues. Magazine drops out pretty nicely. And the talon also holds in really nicely, actually and releases just fine. You can kind of see it right up there. There's a double release with the katana. So you just gotta be careful with that because it does have to go through two of them. Um, but it seems pretty, pretty nice to me. And we're gonna go ahead and plug up that hole. Nice, airtight seal as well. So in the next part of this, we're gonna go ahead and take, take some shots with it. All right, before we do uh, more of the firing test, I did wanna go over the three pieces that were in the kit that we didn't get to use, and there's a purpose for them. This is an extra O-ring for the pusher, so that's nice to have a little piece of extra. This is a spring spacer, so if you're using a spring that can use some extra compression, you would use this. And then this is gonna help you change out your barrel. You're gonna push this through the front to pop out the barrel and replace it if you so chose to, which I might be doing so in the future as this is a PETG barrel. I kind of want to see how it works with it and see if we can't use a different kind of barrel material, perhaps like brass or what have you, um, down in the future. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these away for now. I'm gonna use them later. <clears throat> there we go. And then we're gonna go ahead and take out some darts, put them in these magazines and see how it works. I've kind of wiped off my hands a little bit so this is a much easier prime. This is using a 10 kilogram turf spring. So not, nothing too crazy right now, but a 10 kilogram turf spring. So we're gonna go ahead and fill up these two magazines and see what kind of results they're gonna get us. All right, so we've got our chronograph set up. I'm gonna be shooting it at the box that it came with. I'm gonna go ahead and start it off with the Katana magazines first and see how we do. The performance of the darts obviously aren't gonna matter depending on which magazine you choose. Uh, I'm just doing this for the sake of testing out both magazines uh, in this adapter. Locks in. So one thing, this is again, the thing you're gonna have to note about the Katanas. Make sure that when you're pushing it in, it goes in all the way to the top, right? Because it does have the two locking mechanisms on there. So you've got to make sure to push it in quite firmly so that it goes all the way up to the top of your uh, magazine. So if you push it in lightly, it'll only catch on the bottom one. For example, like this, it'll catch only on the bottom one. And obviously you can't feed darts that way. So when you're feeding in a Katana magazine, feed it in all the way until it stops and then everything will be lined up. So we've got the chronograph turned on. If you've ever used a Falcon Fire, you should know that the performance of a stock one is right around just a little bit above 60. Oh, dang, 124. Feeds in rather nicely. 120. One twelve 
120.2 120.2 and the last one again is a 120.3 so roughly around the 120 mark so knocked over my stand back there um, but there's that let's go ahead and get the magazine out since it is empty and again just like the other one when you do this you're going to get it caught on the second one so when you've got a katana make sure you mean it when you pull it out and when you put it back in it might work best and i'll probably end up using it with talon magazines as that's going to be a nice smooth fit nothing to worry about with the double uh notches here so this is it with the um, talon magazine One oh four point nine on that one. One twenty three on that shot. Take a look at this feeding. One twenty point seven, really consistent here. One oh three point eight. As I say that, you know, it just drops a few of those darts. I think I got one more in here. 121.5, my magazine is empty. Now this is something that I saw from Walcom's channel, but if you have a Katana magazine, you can just top load this blaster. So if you're gonna use a Katana magazine on here, you might just use it as a fixed mag like a Mauser. Did I misfeed? Yeah. Uh, let me get that out, I misfed. Let's get one of these out. Okay, there we go. Of course, you have to open that up. Lock it into place. You can see that the katanas feed in just fine. So I've been shooting into this box just to let you know that, what is that, 12, 13 shots eventually make a hole and start pushing darts all the way inside. <laughs> um, not really a feature, but uh, eventually, as you're shooting darts hard enough, they will start to punch the holes into things. The dart fit in this barrel material is a fairly loose dart fit. As you can see here, it just kind of falls right into place. There we go. Yeah. So it's a fairly loose barrel material. I think I, think I see a tightening ring inside of here. So it's probably a little bit tighter in the back and then it just loosens up in the front. So um, let's move things out of the way here and talk about this blaster some more and see what we really think about it at the end of the day here. All right, so this blaster has doubled in power from the use of the 10 kg Nerf Turf spring with this new sealed breech and pusher O-ring. We've got the capacity now to do what it is that we want to do with this blaster as far as being able to use it as a sidearm with uh, magazines, which I think is phenomenal. That's what this blaster should have been from the beginning. The colors that are available with Gavin Fuzzy are varied. Uh, I chose the red here, or rather he picked the red out for me. I asked him to surprise me with the color. He picked red um, for myself, which is pretty awesome. It doesn't match obviously with the orange, but I'm going to be painting this up to match that way it will and let's take a look at a couple of things that i wanted to know regarding this blaster because it was important to me <clears throat> and this pusher pretty much rides right up to the end of where the magazines would be sitting here so that's pretty cool i was not sure where in the let's see here where in this whole bit the magazine would end up going and it looks like if you're looking at your original one it's going to the end of the um the, where the barrel would the faux barrel would start on the old one here so it pretty much pretty much matches up fairly well the profile is very similar to the old aesthetic it even matches up with this front sight here don't know if you can completely see that these of course are picatinny rails at the top if you wanted to add an optic there um, the 
bolt seems to be holding up rather well. Again, it's reinforced with that spine, so that's pretty cool. When I was installing it, I was having a little bit of a hard time putting the notch together with this, and that's because the bolt doesn't have the ridges that used to be on the old bolt, which keep it aligned this way. Uh, that's important, obviously, to keep the alignment there, but when you're using it as a magazine, the, uh, with a magazine, these are gonna get in the way, so you're gonna have to take them off, which uh, Gavin has done in his version. But what that means is, as you're putting the two halves of that hand slide in, it sometimes pushes it from one side to the other, so you're not getting the right kind of alignment. That's probably the most annoying thing about it, to be honest with you, but that's a very minor thing in comparison to how easy this was. It literally took me less than 20 minutes to put this together, uh, even talking to you about it while I was doing so. So realistically, if I didn't wanna do any of that, it probably could have taken me 10 to 15 minutes to put this whole thing together. Uh, straight out of the package, it works. This trigger feels really nice, and I think it looks pretty nice. Everything is built rock solid. These notches just feel really good. Um, there's a couple of holes here for Picatinny on the lower part of your barrel. You can also see when the dart is loaded, which I like. Uh, you can definitely see it when it's in here. There we go. There it is. You can see it now. Um, there's that dart. Uh, that way you can check to see if you've got something loaded in there. Whew. And man, it is built really solidly. I'm gonna go ahead and um, do probably in a separate video more firing of this blaster and more of my final real thoughts and opinions about it. This is kind of just a first look installation and kind of first impressions that I have about the spam kit from Gavin Fuzzy. Excellent work as always if you've picked up any of his stuff before. This stuff is top notch. The screws that he uses are also smaller than your standard Nerf screws, so be sure not to lose them, or you might end up having to source these smaller screws. Um, but installation of it was really simple. Putting it back together was even easier because it only used a couple of screws, whereas that had a lot more screws all throughout. This whole barrel piece doesn't need to be taken apart. It was much easier to put back together. Um, I like that they even replaced the trigger because that trigger feel is really, really nice. What I'm probably going to end up doing this blaster in the future is seeing where I can push it. This is using a 10 kg spring here now. My sharp fires have been using the number 62 Hillmans, which are like 16, 18 kilograms, depending on how much, uh, how much of the spring you're using. Um, <clears throat> And those are punching anywhere in the 170s, 180s and up, sometimes knocking on the almost 200 FPS. So that's a lot of spring load for a very small pistol. This one might be able to do the same, we'll see. I'll definitely have to check out the barrel material, reinforce the catch, because the catch is a lot flimsier in the Falcon Fire than it is in the Sharp Fire. Um, but man, this, this just looks so cool and it feels really nice. Very, very, very nice job, Gavin. Um, I don't know how else to end this other than thank you guys for watching. Uh, comment down in the video below if you have any thoughts or questions about this piece, anything you'd like to see me do with it in the future. And uh, like if you found this video helpful at all, go ahead and follow me on all of the social media stuff in the description. And thank you guys for watching. Nerf on, everybody. All right, we're gonna do one more segment before we wrap up here, and that is a cycle test. So I've got a Katana magazine in here. I'm gonna to try to rapidly shoot them off as fast as I can and see if I can do this without knocking over the camera. Here we go. Oh, that's it. I got the bolt lock on here. So with the Katana's bolt lock, it won't go any further. And that's uh, a good cycle rate for a hand-primed pistol. Thank you guys for watching.